Hi, it's Steve from Part Select. Today we're going to show you how to change the evaporator fan motor on your refrigerator. And it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver and maybe a pair of needle nose pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, since we will be working around some electrical circuits, we'll need to pull the refrigerator far enough forward to disconnect the power. So simply pull the plug. And then we're going to open the freezer door and we'll completely remove any items on the shelves and the shelves themselves. So we'll pull out the individual freezer drawers, lift them off their bracket and set them aside. single shelf, just unclip it from the right hand side and slide it over to the clips on the left side. Next we'll disengage that light shield, There's a couple of tabs on the right side of it and one on the left. So just disengage the ones on the right, tilt it forward and unhook it from the left side. Then remove the bulb. Now the screws that we're going to remove will be the three quarter inch hex head screws across the top of that evaporator cover. And then there are two more down closer to the bottom, one on either side. Once we've done that, we'll be able to tilt that panel out, disconnect the light socket from the cover. And we're also going to have to remove all three of these shelf rails on the left side to be able to tilt that cover around. Well, next we're going to remove the three left-hand side rails. So simply pull the inner rail forward. And you'll note a little plastic release tab closer to the back. So just depress that and then pull the whole rail completely out of the holder. Do that for all three. Well, next, remove the holders. So just lift up sharply on the front and that will disengage it from a tab that is attached to the sidewall. And with it tilted up, just pull it straight out and that will disengage from the rear tab. There's a slotted opening at the back and at the front for those to engage. Just set those aside. Now with those pieces removed, we can next remove the quarter inch hex head screws. With the screws removed, we can tilt the left side of that panel a little bit forward, lift up on the upper panel. We should be able to bring that out far enough to drop it down. And once we get it down far enough, we can gain access to the wire terminals attached to the light socket. Simply remove those. And if they're on very tight, just utilize your needle nose pliers. Pull them straight off. Then we'll take that panel and set it aside. Now that will give us access to the evaporator fan motor and the bracket that it sits in. Now the easiest way to replace this motor is to take the whole bracket assembly out, set it on a suitable work surface, and then we can change the motor. Now to do so, we will need to remove the three wires that are attached to the motor. And there should be enough length in the harness that you can pull that motor bracket forward and tilt it and you'll be able to gain access to the wire terminals. So just take note of the wire coloring and where they are attached, then pull them off of the motor. And again, if they're snug, you may need to use your needle nose pliers. And then we can take that whole assembly and set it on a suitable work surface and we'll change out that motor. Now with the evaporator fan motor and bracket out on a suitable work surface, we can now change that motor out. So our first step will be to pull the evaporator fan blade off of the motor 
So just while holding the motor on the bracket, reach in and grasp on that fan blade and pull it straight off. Then we'll just set that aside. Now this model uses a plastic clamp that holds that motor to the bracket. You'll see there's a tab on either side that hook into the bracket. So really what we're going to do is just push in on that bracket, disengage one side, and we'll do the same on the opposite side. And keep in mind the orientation of the motor in relation to the bracket itself so that we we'll reinstall it in the same manner. That will remove the retainer clamp and then the motor will just pull out of the bracket. Now there should be a rubber bushing at the front of that motor where it enters that bracket and if it's stuck on the motor remember to take it out and reinstall it in the bracket. And as well there should be a rubber bushing at the back as well. Make sure that it stays in that bracket. So next we'll set the motor into position. Slide it through the opening. We'll take the retaining strap and line it up so that the back of the motor lines up with that rubber bushing. And then we'll push that bracket through until it clips on both sides. Make sure it's attached firmly and it's flush on the inside. We can next reinstall the fan blade. And we're just going to push that onto the shaft until it bottoms out. Make sure it turns freely and doesn't contact the side of the bracket. And we'll also take note of where those wire terminals are going to go. The orange and white wires can interchange on those two larger terminals. The smaller terminal is for the green ground wire. We want to make sure that we do not mix that ground wire up. It has to go on that terminal. And now we're ready to put the motor back into the refrigerator. Now when reinstalling the fan motor bracket, we want to make sure that we, first of all, put the wire terminals on in the proper location. So the orange and white wires are the actual power wires to that motor. We'll attach those first and then ensure that we get the ground wire attached to that ground wire strap. Make sure all of them are secure. Now when we tilt that motor bracket up into position, you notice there's a little notch on the left hand side and that is where that wire harness will feed up through. So we'll put it forward enough. We can rotate it. Line it up with the two slots in the housing. Push it straight back. Ensure that that wire harness is in that notch. And that should allow that bracket to go flush with the projections on the side of the interior liner. Now next we'll install the evaporator cover. And it's probably easier to remove the light socket from the actual evaporator cover and then pull the wires out through the hole and then attach them to the socket at that point. So to remove that socket, we're just going to depress that tab on the narrow end and then rotate the socket out through the front. And we can then take that panel, get it roughly into position, and then we'll pull the wire harness through the opening. Then we'll attach the wires to the socket. The dark colored wire goes on the lower terminal or the one closest to the back. And they are a different sized terminals, so it's very difficult to mix them up. And the white wire towards the front. We'll then tuck the back end of that socket in and just depress that clip on the front and snap it into position. Now we're going to slide the panel over in the position. And we'll line up the lower screw holes first. And we'll put those two screws in without tightening them. Now with those two screws just loosely in position, 
We can now line up the screw holes on the top. We need to make sure that they do line up with the screw receptors that are mounted on the liner. And again, we'll just put those in without tightening them first. And once we have them all in position, we'll tighten them up securely. And now we're ready to put the side rails back in. Now to reinstall the shelf rails, you'll note that there is a slotted opening at the back of that rail holder and another one on the front. One's horizontal, one's vertical. So we're going to slide that vertical one. So we'll begin by inserting the horizontal one at a bit of an angle. We'll lift it above the front one, slide it fully back, keeping it pressed tight against the side wall, and then it will line up with the front one, snap it down into position. We'll do the same for all three, and yeah, make sure they're all engaged. And then we're going to actually put the rails back in position. The end with the rubber bumper will go in first, so just slide it into that opening, make sure it catches that little hook at the front, and then push it all the way back, and it will snap into position. Pull it full extension forward to verify that it's latched. And do the same with the remaining two. We can now reinstall the baskets. So we'll pull our bottom ones out. You note there is a little ridge on both of these that will engage that top rail on the shelf. So we'll just slide those back until it drops down past those little tabs and lift up in the front and insert the pins with the appropriate holes on both sides. And the same procedure applies for all three baskets. We'll next install the upper shelf. We'll slide it in on the left side, make sure it's underneath those two tabs, get it back into position and then snap it down on the right hand side. We'll next install the light bulb. Make sure it's tight. And then the cover for the light bulb, we'll put the left hand side tab in first and then we'll engage those two on the right. We're now ready to reload the shelves and reconnect the power and our repair is complete. I told you it was an easy job. Thanks for watching and good luck with your repair.